In this video, we're going to write the equation for exponential functions that have what is called compound interest. So these are going to be very similar to the other word problems that we've solved, but these are going to have compounded interest with a very specific compounding of, you know, quarterly, monthly, weekly, etc. So if you look on the screen, this equation is very, very similar to the previous video, but it's a little bit more complex. So let's walk through it together. The first thing hopefully you're noticing is that your A value is exactly the same. It is your initial amount that you have starting, whether that's money or something else. Then you have your parentheses still with one plus or minus a number, depending on if you have growth or decay. But in this case, your R is being divided by N, and I want to kind of explain why. So in this particular problem, R is what's called your annual interest rate. So this is how much interest you earn per year. So you have to make sure that when you're solving these types of problems, if you're going to use this equation, that R is your annual interest rate. If R is not your annual interest rate, you won't be able to use this equation. So R is your annual interest rate. Then N is the number of times it's compounded per year. So we'll walk through what that means, but N is going to divide R by the number of times it's compounded per year. So we have our annual interest rate for R, and N is the number of times it's compounded per year. N is used twice here. It's used to divide R. So if we had something that was compounded monthly, we would take our annual interest rate divided by 12 months. And then we also multiply it by the number of years here. So T represents years in this case, not just number of time periods. And we're going to take T times our number of times it's compounded per year. And this will make more sense as we do an example together. But note those little differences. R is an annual interest rate, T is the time in years, and N is the number of times it's compounded per year. So you're going to see a couple of really typical compounding options. And all of these compounding options help you to figure out what your N value is, how many times it's compounded per year. Now, if it says it's compounded annually, what that means is n is equal to 1 because it's only compounded one time per year. Annually means once per year. Then if we look at semi-annually, semi-annually means it happens at the halfway point in the year and then at the end of the year. So it happens two times a year. So that means n is going to be equal to 2. Quarterly means that things are compounded quarterly or just like a quarter is four quarters in a dollar. This happens four times per year, so n is four. Monthly means that we are doing this once per month, so n is equal to 12. And then weekly would be when n is equal to 52, because there are 52 weeks in a year. Now there may be other instances that we have to think through about how many times it might be compounded in a year. For example, daily might be another one that pops up, and if it were to be daily, we would be able to think through that n would be equal to about 365. So you really have to think through how many times it's going to be compounded within that year frame and then think through what that n value is going to be in that instance. So let's take a look at this first example here. It says you deposit $9,000 in an account that pays 1.46% annual interest compounded quarterly. So because it says compounded quarterly, I know I'm going to use this new situation because the compounding needs to use the compounding equation. Now remember the equation we're going to use is y equals a times 1 plus r over n to the power of n times t. So we need to find a, r, n, and t. Well I know to start off that my a value is equal to 9 because that's my starting value here that I can see. My R value is going to use that 1.46%. I need to take 1.46 and divide it by 100. So I get 0 0.0146. So my R value is equal to 0 0.0146. 
Then my n value, because it's compounded quarterly, quarterly means four times a year, so I have four. And then my t value, I don't know just yet. I'll find that out in part b. So here we have the equation y equals 9,000 times 1 plus, because it's earning interest, so I know it's a growth situation, 0 0.0146 all divided by 4 to the power of 4 times t. So I was able to replace some of those values. Now, while this is the basic equation, I do want to simplify this part a little bit further. So if I take 0 0.0146 and divide it by 4, I end up with 1 plus 0 0.00365. And if I add 1 to that, I end up with 1.00365. So I'm going to rewrite this equation off to the side as y equals... 9,000, and then I have 1.00365 to the power of 4 times t. So there is my equation. Remember, key details that told us how to use this equation were the compounded quarterly, because we had an n value equal to 4, and the fact that we had annual interest over here. So you can see annual interest, 1.46% annually. We need that r value to be annual. Now, this last part says find the balance in the account after three years. So remember, t is our years, so this is where t is going to equal 3. So if I go to my equation, y equals 9,000 times 1.00365 to the power of 4 times 3. Well, the power of 4 times 3 is really 12, so I'm going to take that to the power of 12. So 9,000 times 1.00365 to the power of 12. In that amount of time, in that three years, I, my account will grow, and I will end up with about $9,402.21 if I don't touch my money and it continues to grow in this way. So I'll gain about $402 over those three years. So let's look at one additional example here. It says you put $12,000 in an investment account earning 9.24% annual interest compounded monthly. So we notice we have an annual interest and it's compounded monthly, which tells me we're going to use that equation that has the N in it because compounded monthly is going to have an N value equal to 12. So I, other values I can see here, I can see that my A value is... 12,000 because that's my starting amount that I invested. So I said my n value is equal to 12 because compounded monthly and there's 12 months in a year. Then my r value is going to be 9.24% divided by 100, turn it into a decimal. So we get 0 0.0924. And we don't yet know what our t value is. So remember, just to refresh your memory, we have y equals a 1 plus r over n to the power of nt. So if we substitute in our values, we have y is equal to 12,000 for our a value, 1 plus 0 0.0924 divided by 12, all to the power of 12 times t. Now, we always want to simplify this part inside of the parentheses if we can. So I'm going to take 0 0.0924 and divide it by 12. So I end up with 1 plus 0 0.0077. Add 1 to that and we get 1.0077. So our equation here, ultimately to end, is going to be y equals 12,000 times 1.0077 to the power of 12t. So that's what I'm going to use in part B. So part B says, how much money do you have after five years? So remember, t needs to be in years, so this is going to be t is equal to 5. And then from here, we have y is equal to 12,000 
times 1.0077 to the power of 12 times t, which is 5. So that turns into 12 times 5 is 60, so that's 12,000 times 1.0077 to the power of 60. So we have 12,000 we can plug in times 1.0077 to the power of 60. And we would end up with, after five years, approximately $19,013.27, which is a pretty great deal. We've increased by $7,000 in just five years.